Ferrari's new rear suspension system has now undergone its first track test. In the world of Formula One, making modifications of this nature is never a simple task. Any intervention that affects the vehicle's dynamic equilibrium must be executed with extreme care as it involves delicate and complex trade-offs. Five months after the start of the 2025 FIA Formula One World Championship season, the Ferrari engineers and technicians have introduced a significant update to the rear suspension of its SF25 car, with the objective of achieving a notable step forward in performance and competitiveness. However, for a definitive evaluation of its effectiveness, the Italian team and Formula One observers will have to wait until the upcoming race at the historic circuit de Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium. In the meantime, there is still time for us to look back at last week's test in order to break down the key elements of this new development in greater detail. The central objective of Ferrari's recent filming day, held at the privately owned Mugello circuit in Tuscany, was unequivocal, to gather the highest possible volume of useful and relevant data regarding the new suspension configuration. The ultimate aim of this session, as is customary during such technical events, was functional analysis of the new mechanical component. However, it is important to remember that testing conducted on a proprietary track, even one that offers a controlled and familiar environment, does not provide a fully representative picture of performance. The absence of external variables, such as competing cars or live race conditions, limits the absolute validity of the findings. Despite this, the strategic and technical significance of the session remains beyond question. So let's look back at what happened last Thursday in Mugello. The day's testing program began with Monegasque driver Charles Leclerc behind the wheel of the Ferrari SF25. He completed a series of short pre-planned runs, meticulously adhering to the outline testing strategy prepared in advance by Ferrari's engineering team. The Monegasque's driving duties concluded shortly before midday. During the morning, Charles Leclerc shared the track with fellow Ferrari driver Antonio Giovinazzi, who was assigned to drive the older SF23 car. The pair operated under a precisely structured schedule that prevented any overlap between the two single-seaters on the circuit. This coordinated, alternating testing approach ensured efficient data collection and smooth execution of the plan without any disruptions. As expected, and as is often the case during such test sessions, the lap times set by the drivers were not relevant for evaluation. The principal focus of this filming day was purely exploratory in nature. The Marinello team sought to observe and analyze, under repeatable and controlled conditions, the behavior of the newly introduced rear pull rod suspension layout fitted to the SF25 Formula One car. Less than one hour after Charles Leclerc completed his stint, seven-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton stepped into the cockpit to begin his own program. The British driver's run plan also followed a precise set of objectives, although his tasks differed from those assigned to his teammate. Lewis Hamilton remained on track for approximately 90 minutes, carrying out a series of longer stints compared to the shorter runs completed earlier in the day by Charles Leclerc. On average, each of Lewis Hamilton's stints consisted of six to seven timed laps, in contrast to the two to three laps that formed the average stint length for Charles Leclerc. This deliberate difference in approach is a clear indication that Ferrari strategically chose a dual-path testing methodology. On one hand, they aim to evaluate the immediate dynamic responses of the new suspension over short runs. On the other hand, they assess the consistency, stability, and repeatability of the rear suspension's performance during longer sequences. This two-pronged approach ensures a broader and more complete data set to support the technical development of the SF25. As reported and anticipated by several Formula One analysts in recent weeks, the changes made to the rear suspension system of the Ferrari SF25 are not radical in nature. Instead, they represent targeted refinements, particularly focused on the geometry of the upper wishbone, at least based on what has been observed from recent footage and analysis. More visual confirmation is expected to come during the Belgian Grand Prix weekend at the spa francorchamps circuit in just a few days, when the technical media and photographers will be able to scrutinize the updated suspension system more closely. The department within Scuderia Ferrari responsible for vehicle dynamics has implemented a modification aimed at reducing the level of anti-squat in the rear suspension assembly. This particular change is consistent with what many observers in the paddock expected from the Italian team. In concrete terms, 
the Ferrari engineers and technicians have repositioned the attachment point of the front link of the upper triangle. It has now been moved to a lower and more forward position relative to its previous mounting point. This geometrical adjustment, though seemingly minor in appearance, significantly alters the kinematics of the suspension system. The effect is a measurable reduction in what engineers call squat, that is, the vertical compression or downward movement of the rear suspension under acceleration, especially in a pull rod configuration such as the one Ferrari employs on the SF25. Taken as a whole, the SF25 chassis project still exhibits a number of inherent limitations. The technical leadership within Ferrari came to the conclusion that, in order to improve how the underbody floor generates aerodynamic performance, it was necessary to make changes to the suspension geometry. In their internal performance analysis, the trade-off between a dynamically less controlled floor and the benefits of a more stable aerodynamic platform appeared to favor the latter. In other words, the Ferrari engineers and technicians believed the performance losses associated with reduced floor control were more significant than the gains that came from a more rigid setup. Of course, such an assessment is always made in relative terms, especially when comparing to how rival Formula One teams such as Red Bull, Mercedes or McLaren manage their own aerodynamic platforms. By reducing rear end squat, the Italian side aims to achieve greater precision in controlling the car's ride height, particularly at high speeds and under heavy loads. This in turn should allow for a broader and more versatile aerodynamic operating window, what engineers call an expanded aero map. The main goal is to ensure that the SF25 single seater can maintain downforce generation across a wider range of speeds and conditions. In theory, this type of suspension redesign could also reduce wear on the floor structure, thereby improving durability and long-run performance. However, these potential gains can only be validated through further on-track testing and data analysis under real race weekend conditions. As with many developments in modern Formula One, the full implications of Ferrari's suspension upgrade will only become clear once the SF25 is evaluated in competitive race conditions. While on-track tests like the one conducted at Mugello provide important early insights, the real test will come when Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton take to the track at Spa-Francorchamps, where factors such as tire degradation, fuel load, and track evolution will add complexity to the picture. What remains clear is Ferrari's determination to continuously refine its 2025 Challenger in pursuit of performance and reliability gains. This latest suspension update represents another step in the team's broader effort to remain competitive against the likes of McLaren, Red Bull, and Mercedes. Whether or not these changes will deliver the desired lap time improvements remains to be seen, but Ferrari's methodical approach demonstrates their commitment to evolving throughout the 2025 Formula One season.